Hello, my name is Anjani, and this video is about the relationship axis in astrology. So, first house is representing your mystery school that you're here to learn about. Seventh house is representing what you're here to learn about in relationship with another person. So first and seventh house are known as the relationship axis. First house being who am I? Seventh house being who are you? The relationship axis answers the question, why on earth would I ever want to be in a relationship? So using the relationship axis is a very helpful tool for understanding your relationship patterns, why you like certain things, or like why you keep getting into the same relationship. There are two of those pathways that are commonly accepted, what we would commonly consider to be an acceptable or socially acceptable pathway for relationship. One of those is Aries Libra. This is the very traditional, I like to call it the leave it to beaver family where um, the mom and dad are just fully together. They support each other. There's one at home doing the home thing. There's one out doing the, the out thing. And then they they just work together. And it's it's like work in the sense of let's, you know, very practical. Let's make this work. Get a house, have a fence and a yard and very traditional, practical form of relationship. The other one that we normally consider to be um, socially normal, acceptable relationship is Pisces and Virgo. Pisces-Virgo relationship axis is about sacred work. This is the relationship that gets together to work toward a common cause, like some some sort of service to humanity this relationship axis is meant to um, you know you get with somebody and you both are really passionate about saving the whales and you both go out and you're you know working for um, for whatever that certain cause is this is sort of like the family who prays together stays together they have this connection to spirituality and sacred work, something that is keeping them together. It, it's usually motivated by helping, healing, protecting the planet kind of thing. The other relationship axis is, oh, there's one other one. Um, that would be Cancer Capricorn. This is very, uh, I think across all of humanity, a very normal relationship. This is about home and family. Um, so Cancer Capricorn relationship axis wants to set a structure, build something, build a foundation for the next seven generations. So they're working on their family tree. They care a lot about the family tree, the house, the um, those, I don't even know the name of those items that get passed down from generation to generation. Cancer Capricorn cares a lot about that. So those three relationship axis totally traditional, normal. We're used to seeing those. Now, what about those other three? Those other three are not traditional and they're, you know, they're different. So if you have one of these other three relationship axes, you can just sort of imagine that most likely you do relationships a little bit different. And even, I might even say that uh, it's uncomfortable for you. So because it's, you know, you, we want to fit in and do what everybody else is doing in relationships and like, oh, well, this is a good relationship. If it has meets these certain requirements and we're doing these certain things. I actually had a, a person I was dating in 2016 who actually had a timeline for what relationships were supposed to do. And I confess that I feel like I'm not good at, at relationships. I'm not good at getting into a ship with one person and staying in that ship and just, you know, I, I'm not good at it. So I come in with that attitude and he's like, well, I'll, I'll help you. And kind of telling me, you know, showing me the ropes of relationship. And it was really, really a great learning experience and interesting. But there was like, well, at three months, you kind of know if you're going to stay together. By six months, you've committed. By about nine months, you start talking about moving in together. 
after a year you probably are moving in together and then a year and a half to two years you you know talking about getting married and this was the timeline which I was like oh my god that sounds like a nightmare so um, let's talk about the next relationship axis so we have uh, Aries Libra the next one would be Taurus Scorpio that's my relationship axis Taurus Scorpio wants to have the maximum amount of pleasure with the least amount of pain they want to um, be in a relationship that is full of intimacy full of electricity full of passion sensuality sexuality this is not the relationship that you get in with your best friend and you just keep aries libra totally can marry their best friend pisces virgo totally can marry their best friend cancer capricorn it's more like the mother father archetype archetypes so i wouldn't say marry their best friend Taurus Scorpio is not trying to marry their best friend. I have a lot of male best friends who I would never, ever, ever even hold their hand or kiss them or anything like that. There's like this very definite, like I am passionately um, turned on by you. And that's the person that Scorpio Taurus relationship axis would want to be with and then there's this like I love you so much let's go hiking together let's have these deep intimate conversations and that's it <laughs> so uh, if you have this relationship axis Taurus Scorpio you'll know you're in the right relationship when you leave from your partner when you separate you still feel energized you feel vitalized you may be tired from the night before because there's a lot of long nights and putting in work in that sort of a way but you feel energized by it you know um you can get up and go running and just like whew, you're alive it's like feels really good and you'll know you're not in that relationship if you feel depleted if you feel drained if you feel like not interested and not excited to go back and you don't want to see you know you it's not that you don't want to see them it's just that you you don't there will be this upsurge of feeling associated with seeing their face thinking of them even just getting a message from them you get like whew, there's like this electricity that goes along with it the next relationship axis uh after that so we would have Gemini and Sagittarius. This is another radical combination because they want to go out and quest. They want to learn things. They want to go out to Burning Man. They want to go to like festivals and workshops and they want to travel abroad and study things and um, expand consciousness, expand their version of reality. So this is called, uh, in shamanic astrology, that's where I'm getting this material. Shamanic astrology is one of my favorite um, paradigms for looking at astrology because it's very in touch with the body. It's very embodied, shamanic. So they call this the, um, the quest mate. So somebody who is going to be on a quest for adventure, for exploration to evolve consciousness. The next pathway we mentioned briefly, Cancer, Cancer Capricorn. Actually, I think I talked about that in depth. So let's move on to Aquarius Leo. This is known as the most radical pathway to relationships. They want to expand, grow, empower each other. Leo Aquarius wants to um, not need each other. They don't want to be in, in stuck and feeling like they have to be stuck in something. They want to be able to grow and expand, empower each other to, you know, push each other, um, be in competition, a little bit of healthy competition with each other and connect with a lot of people. This is one of the relationships that can be comfortable with having, uh, not the only one, Taurus, Scorpio can be polyamorous or have multiple love relationships, can be. It depends on Venus and Mars. I say can be because I have that pathway and it's never something that I'm interested in doing. But I have Cancer Moon and I have Pisces uh, for my Mars position. So it's just not something, but some people do. So um, Taurus, Scorpio, 
Leo Aquarius, these are the two that most likely would be polyamorous or have multiple love relationships going on at the same time. And it's totally a valid pathway for them. So uh, going back to Leo and Aquarius, they want radical freedom and to be big, show up big. So this might be like Jada. I, I'm going to look at their charts maybe this week. Jada and Will Smith, Jada Pinkett and Will Smith, both of them being grand, big, large, beautiful, radiant, and also uh, being together. And I've read an article probably 11 years back or so, 10 or 10 years maybe, saying that they were free with each other. They were allowed to date other people. And it just blows my mind. Like, how can people do that? But that's Leo Aquarius. They're totally able to because they are about being their own individual, being their own individual self and choosing every day to be in that relationship because they want to, not because of um, sexuality like Taurus Scorpio, not because they're working on a project together to help and heal the world. Pisces Virgo, not because they're raising kids and setting up the next seven generations, which would be Cancer Capricorn, not because of duty or practicality, which would be Aries Libra. They're doing it just for their own experience of being uh, royalty in their, in their physical bodies. So that's a brief summary of the six pathways to relationship according to astrology. So if you don't know your rising sign, I just finished this document and I'll uh, post it down below in the comments section or in the notes section of this video. Um, so you can go, if you don't know your rising sign, there's, um, I made this document where you can kind of read through and fill it out and it it goes through some questions that give you clues about what your rising sign might be, which will help you to understand what your relationship axis is. So thank you so much for watching the video. I look forward to connecting with you soon.